Hey, what is up, guys? Morph Talks Wrestling here, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the Monday Night Raw of February 29th, 2016, the first ever leap leap year Raw. You know, the first ever Raw that's on a leap day. Next one's gonna be in 2044. Hopefully, it doesn't fall on Friday the 13th. I'm just kidding. Um. Anyways, this Raw was pretty. If you're trying to emphasize, you know, it's supposed to be some kind of special Raw because it's a leap day, then they did a horrible job. This Raw was, oh, this Raw was disastrous. It was so many cringy, mo so many cringe moments. I didn't, man, like I was so tempted to change the channel, or, you know, just turn off the TV and go to sleep early. It was that bad. There weren't too many bad moments, so it's not an awful Raw, it's just, you know, very disappointing, underwhelming, really, it's, you know, it really add not, adds nothing to the tables, but, all that aside, let's get started, so our first segment, um, Triple H, he opened up the show, and he claims, you know, people need to know their place, such as Roman Reigns, he just talks about how he beat the shit out of him, and left him in a bloody mess, and out comes Dean Ambrose, he talks about, you know, Dean Ambrose, he talks about that Triple H can't beat him in a one-on-one -on -one match and that he's afraid of him. And then he challenges Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And then Triple H says he'll give the answer in Night of Raw. And apparently Dean Ambrose is supposed to face Alberto Del Rio, which I'll get to later. But, like, come on, out of everyone, Alberto Del Rio. Really, man? Really? Really, Triple H? Really? Anyways, I'll get to that later. Our first match was Becky Lynch for Sasha Banks. Number one contendership for the WWE Divas Championship. They're going back and forth with this match. This is actually a really good match. And it ends in a draw. <laughs> Smells like NXT. Anyways, it was a great match. It was a pretty good match. I like these two wrestlers. I think this. I think they're really t I, Like I said, I like to see a triple threat. But apparently it's going to be a rematch on SmackDown. Which is... Being probably being taped right now, and we're gonna see it on Thursday, and hopefully this sets up for a potential triple threat match at WrestleMania. So, and it was our second match was Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz, and it was a really short match. The Miz won with a roll up, and um, it was good for The Miz. It's been a while since he won actually won a match. Oh wow! Excuse me. Our second segment had Stephanie McMahon come out and. She tries to continue her speech after receiving the Vincent J. McMahon Legacy of, of Excellence Award. And the crowd wouldn't let her talk and she just goes off ranting about how the crowd knows nothing about respect. And how, you know, she just, she's just really, really pissy. Um, you can see the vein on her neck. And um, really, <laughs> she got, she was salty. She was really salty. Anyways, our third match is the Lucha Dragons versus Rusev and Sheamus of the League of Nations. I don't feel like the Lucha Dragons are going to work. You know, since Kalisto's the United States Champion, I don't get why they're putting them in pointless tag team matches. Why can't they have a feud with someone over with the United States Championship? Why not? Why, 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 why add them to pointless tag team matches? They're really... And then they have him take the pinfall loss. Why? Why? I... I... <sighs> Our fourth segment. Oh my god. Oh, I was praying they would delete the segment. It was some bullshit segment about Natalia and Sub Subway. Like, Natalia, she's such a great wrestler, but she she gets put in these segments that are so, so just cringeworthy. Oh, my brain. Happy March, everyone, by the way. Our fourth match was Ryback versus Adam Rose. Um, Ryback, uh, I, I like this new character, good for him, he really does need to focus on Ryback and not be put in these pointless tag team matches with these, with these old fossils. Um, with all due respect to Big Show and Kane. And, you know, somewhere around the show, the Wyatt family, they cut a promo, I, I don't even know who they're feuding against. Um... Anyways, our fifth match was a New Day versus Y2AJ, I don't know how I feel about you know, the tag team, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. So the newly formed team of AJ Styles and Chris Jericho take on a New Day. Before the match started, the New Day cut a promo about, you know, how they're just the best of friends and how they always stick together and then Y2AJ wins after Chris Jericho makes Kofi Kingston tap out to the walls of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho and AJ, they challenge a New Day for the tag team championship 
match which is, which is going to happen next week. So I guess, you know, we'll see. Are they going to be tag team champions? Do I like them as tag team champions? I don't know. I don't know. Because I kind of like AJ, you know, as a singles competitor. But, you know, I guess, if, you know, they can build him up with the veteran. You know, he doesn't need it, but he, they can do it. Hopefully they don't fuck it up. Our fifth segment. Oh, this is this is the part of the show which is actually pretty disappointing. So Mr. McMahon, he comes out and talks about what would happen if Shane McMahon took over Monday Night Raw. He later claims that would never happen and then introduces The Undertaker. Undertaker comes out and says Shane McMahon's blood will be on Vince's hands, not his. And what the hell? What the hell? This damn inch is longer than this promo. They they did they they emphasized the Undertaker's return so much, and then they gave us that. They gave us, they gave the Undertaker to say one damn sentence, and he's done. Go go back go back home. We'll see you at WrestleMania. What? Why? Why? Why do you hype it up so much if you if you're gonna have the Undertaker only say one one damn sentence? I don't get it. Like his entrance was. Freaking longer than his promo. I, oh man. And then our sixth match was Bubba Ray Dudley versus one of the Usos, which you know, I I can't remember. I can't I can't remember which Usos was in the match. All I know is Bubba Ray won after you know D1 put the table and distracted whichever Uso he was facing. And then our sixth segment was our truth. He breaks Goldust's heart. Goldust is hard by saying he's done with him, and then. Gold does. He's he's sad. He walks away. Our truth. He kind of, you know, feels a little guilty about it. And then our seventh match was Brie Bella versus Naomi. I'm glad that they have Naomi lose to this bimbo. Naomi won by submission after the match. Lana comes out and has a stare down with Brie for some reason. That's I guess going to create a rivalry. But as long as you get to see Lana, I'm good because I, I love Lana a lot better than Brie. Then our finally, our so-called main events that apparently we're supposed to give a fuck about was Dean Ambrose versus Alberto Del Rio. Dean wins by DQ. I'm not going to go in depth in the match because I don't really care about it. And then after the match, Dean, he challenges... Okay, anyway. Uh, who just came in? This is my dog. Um, anyways, uh, Triple H, he accepted Dean Ambrose's challenge... For a championship match, which is gonna happen next week. But before he did, he said he said no to it. But then Dean Ambrose he punch he just punched Triple H like a savage. And what are you doing? He just punched Triple H like a savage he is and I'm like, wow, wow, he's more of a badass than Roman Reigns in that one little spot. But what the hell? Don't make Dean Ambrose Lose to this jack off, and you're just gonna walk out. Anyways, don't don't make Dean Ambrose lose. If this is your perfect opportunity, WWE, make things right. And I think they're gonna do like some kind of march to madness thing, which is doesn't it sounds pretty promising. Hopefully they add the good matches in there. And that's it for all, really. Dean Ambrose isn't bloody, unlike Roman Reigns. Last <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And Triple H, he just, he just grabbed Byron Saxon and he just tossed him because fuck Byron Saxon. That's why. Who cares about the damn bastard? No one does. Because he's a horrible commentator. Nobody likes him. He's so bland. He's boring. And he's just plain annoying. I'm glad to see that happen. He's probably the best part of the show. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. Subscribe for more. I will be doing raw reviews every week. Also, follow me on Instagram. I have my Instagram link down there. Um, I don't really think I'm going to upload any videos this week, except the top 10 moments of the week, which I'm. it's going to be pretty fucking hard to do, you know. How the fuck am I going to get any top moment from this? The only good moments I can see are Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, uh, Y2AJ, kind of, sort of, Undertaker, not really, no. Triple H. Freaking throwing away Byron Saxon like a piece of trash. Oh, this is good. I guess it's like, I don't know. It'll be hard. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. And if you didn't, like I said, if you enjoyed, please like, out, subscribe. I'll appreciate any type of support. And also, actually, no. I'll, oh, yeah, I'm going to. This is something I should have done in a while. I 
I'm gonna make an introduction video for this channel. And I'm gonna upload it sometime this week, definitely before Saturday, and yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching, and have a beautiful day. Goodbye.